In this lesson, I'm gonna give you my favorite guitar seventh chords exercise. This is fantastic for working on jazz chord shapes, guitar technique, uh, training our ears to hear the difference between different chord qualities, but I especially wanna give it to you so we can instill the music theory concepts of chord construction and really see and understand them on the fretboard all over the guitar. This is episode nine of a YouTube lesson series about how to master chords on the guitar, how to understand them and how to practice them. Episode eight was a video about the music theory and chord construction of seventh chords. If you don't have a grasp on the theory of that yet, check that video out. This video is about how to see that chord construction on the fretboard and how to specifically practice it so we know it in a practical sense and with our hands. Don't make the mistake of learning anything about guitar, seventh chords, or any kind of chord construction or any kind of music theory without having a way to practice it on the actual instrument so we can get those concepts into our real playing and hear them. Just learning the theory is kind of like reading about swimming without getting in the water. In that theory lesson, we learned about the seventh chord qualities that exist within a key. This exercise is called the chord quality cycle exercise because we're gonna cycle through all of those qualities, those chord types, and a couple more off of a single root at a time. That way we'll get to see how they're related, how they're different. It'll force us to understand the actual construction of the chord on the fretboard by moving just the notes we need to to turn it into the next chord through the cycle. So we're gonna take those chord qualities, we're gonna cycle through them off of a single root, and we're gonna do that off of the sixth string, fifth string, and fourth string to get all a, a bunch of voicings, so several versions of this. And then we're gonna make sure that we do that off of every root through the circle of fourths. This is the type of complete and methodical exercise that I love because they really work. The chord quality types that we learn that come from the major scale when we build seventh chords are we're gonna get a major seven chord, a dominant seven chord, a minor seven chord, and a half diminished chord. I list them in that order because in that order, major seven chord to dominant seven chord, one note has to move one half step to turn major seven into dominant seven. One note from the dominant seven has to move one half step to turn it into a minor seven chord. One note from the minor seven has to move one half step down to turn it into the half diminished chord. And we're gonna add two chord types to the cycle. We're gonna start with just a triad and we're going to end with a fully diminished seventh chord. Every time a chord changes, it's gonna be one note moving one half step. So we're gonna take this major triad. I'll go ahead and just bar the whole thing. And then we're gonna take one note, the root here, and bring it down to major seven and make a major seven chord. We're gonna take that same note and bring it down to be flat seven. That's what makes a dominant seventh chord. Now we're gonna take the third of the chord and we're gonna bring it down. Now it's a minor seven chord. Now we're gonna take the five of this chord and bring it down and make a half diminished chord. And then we're gonna take the flat seven of that half diminished and we're gonna bring it down a half step. And every time we bring a note down to half step, all the rest stay the same. And that's how we get all these chords. This is a fully diminished seventh chord. And I always want us to go back around as well from the bottom up. It's actually harder, it makes us think even more. Uh, diminished seven, half diminished or minor seven flat five, those are the same chord minor seven, and then dominant seven, and then major seven, and then back to the triad. That's the full cycle. Now, if we weren't playing in this parallel way, the parallel way being that we keep the same root and move all the chord qualities uh, above the root, we wouldn't see the relationships in this way where you have to find, okay, where's the third? Because I know that the minor seven has to have a flat third and we're moving. This is very beneficial in this way. If we only practice chords that exist together within a key, we don't necessarily see them right next to each other in this way, how you can move little things to create other chords. Um, in the next lesson, and I'm gonna give you an exercise where we play the chords within a key, and that's very beneficial as well and a little more applicable to how pr progressions work in songs. But this is again for kind of mastering our perspective of what's happening note by note by note within each chord. So before I go through more demonstrations of the cycle, I want us to start with something I just call a template, which is to find our starting chord on each string that we want to be doing this cycle through. So our template in this exercise is just going to be the major triad shape, the one that you saw me start with here, and then your C major triad shape off the fifth string root, and then your C major triad shape 
off of the fourth string, string root. Now, in episode seven of this chord series, we did an awesome exercise where we used exactly those. We actually learned six places to play any one major chord. These are three of those six places. So I highly recommend checking that uh, video out. It's a great exercise as well. We wanna learn these templates and, and just to, the first thing I want you to be able to do is just be able to bounce between them. So you play major, C major, C major. Just make sure you really can find those and see those. It's great. Okay, now that we have our three shapes that are our templates, we're ready to start doing the cycle exercise by starting with that template and moving one note at a time through all of these chord qualities. So I already showed you on C, but I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do it off the sixth string, then the fifth string, then the fourth string. So we did this once already. We'll do C major, C major seven, C dominant seven, C minor seven, C half diminished or minor seven flat five, C fully diminished, uh, C, sometimes I'll say fully diminished, sometimes I'll say uh, diminished seven, uh, same thing, minor seven, diminished seven, major seven, back to the triad. For the right hand, you can do anything you want. You're gonna notice that sometimes I'm gonna switch over to a hybrid picking where I'm plucking the bass with the pick and plucking with my fingers on the rest of them. Sometimes I just do only finger style, sometimes I will strum it. And for demonstrating for you, I'll kind of do a variety occasionally just so you hear different versions. Also, arpeggiating through is fine for, for working on this as well. You can really hear the qualities come out a little more that way as well, but it's an excellent ear training exercise to um, not arpeggiate, so you can try to listen for the note that actually changes each time. Because when it's an internal note, sometimes can be a little tricky to hear. If you need to investigate what something is in a chord, because you're confused about that or why it's moving or knowing what you need to move but needing to find it, in this lesson series, we went over a whole curriculum of how to find that stuff by counting with the major scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three. Oh, that means that's flat three. Okay, that's the flat third of this chord. That kind of uh, process is fully explained in the other videos of this series. Okay, now I just need to do the cycle off of C, off the fifth string and the fourth string. So off the fifth string. Um, I'm gonna play chords in different ways. Sometimes there's gonna be a number of ways you can you can fret them with the left hand. Um, if it's this major triad shape, or this kind of physical shape, I tend to play with the tips of the fingers if I'm playing low down on the fretboard. And I will bar it like this uh, more often if I'm up here higher on the fretboard. But you'll see me do either one in either place sometimes too. So C major, C major seven, C dominant seven, C minor seven, C half diminished, C diminished seven, going back, minor seven, dominant seven, major seven, triad, okay? Now I'm gonna go up to this other spot off the fourth string, major triad. Now notice I'm doing this flat version instead of this because I'm higher up on the neck, uh, so I'm barring with the third finger. Major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, minor seven flat five, diminished seven, going back, minor seven flat five, minor seven, dominant seven, major seven, and back to major triad. So that is the cycle exercise. We did it off the sixth string, fifth string, fourth string. It's great for our ears if we're listening internally on what's happening there in the chord qualities. It's really good technique exercise to jump between those. Um, but again, it's very much a theory thing where you're thinking what chord quality type and how is the structure of that chord how is it spelled or constructed? And I need to make the shape for it kind of going through in that order. Super good. So we need to repeat this a bunch. And instead of repeating it a million times off of C on those same spots, we're gonna change roots every time and do it again and again and again until we've done it off of every note. Now, you'll almost never see this grouping of chords together in real music, but you will see little chunks of it, a few at a time. For example, the song Something by the Beatles, written by George Harrison, uses those first three chords as the the, the beginning of the song. So it's C major triad to C major seven to C dominant seven for that song. Something in the way she moves attracts me like no other love. And in jazz tunes, it's very common for a dominant seventh chord to then turn into a minor seventh chord off that same root. So like a D dominant seven turn to D minor seven. And then resolving to C major seven. 
and a minor 2-5-1 in jazz easily is interpreted with a half diminished chord shape to a fully diminished chord shape and then landing on the uh, tonic minor chord. Half diminished, fully diminished, resolve. And that's basically a minor 2-5-1 chord progression. So little pieces of it come up in, in real music, but the real purpose of this is, again, the way that we can practice this all over the fretboard and see the fretboard more clearly and have that technique of getting used to these chord shapes in all these different positions. Okay, we're gonna use the circle of fourths to go through every note possible. I always like to do that when going through all the keys, going through the circle of fourths. Whatever root we were on, we're just gonna think, what is a fourth up? Find that, that is our next root. We were on C, one, two, three, four. Now we're on F, so we're gonna do the same thing off the sixth string, fifth string, and fourth string off of the root F. Okay, with these giant exercises where we're going through all these keys and all these positions, I always want to demonstrate through the whole thing because um, I'll talk about some of the technique and some of the fingering as I go and we can just kind of together listen through it and play through it. And I just want to demonstrate that it's really worth doing. I don't want it to just be something where I say, here's an exercise. Oh yeah, and of course it's great if you do it through all the keys. Like I really want us to have a sense of what that feels like and also show that it's not as intimidating as it sounds um, and it's so worth it. So I think you'll start thinking this way with other types of exercises like, hmm, how can I manipulate this to play it in more places, whether that's tonalities and keys and positions on the guitar. Again, this is this kind of manipulation is truly how we start to master how the fretboard works. And again, it's re repetition that is fantastic for our technique, but it's keeping us sharp too, because it's not mindless repetition. So here we go. We're gonna go through F is the next one. So I'm gonna do triad, major seven, dominant seven, uh, minor seven. Uh, you'll see me sometimes bar this way with the middle finger on the root and then the third finger barring. If I'm lower on the fretboard, I'll sometimes do all of the fingertips. So you can do either of those. And uh, half diminished pretty much always has to be like this with the left hand. And then the diminished chord, I'll sometimes bar with the first finger and put the root with the second finger, or I'll sometimes use all the fingertips as well for that. So just an explanation of those options. I'm reversing back around like I want you to do. Uh, major seven, pretty tricky up there. And uh, if you're on uh, a guitar like a nylon string guitar or an acoustic guitar that doesn't have as, as high of a reach, don't force it, right? Just give yourself a pass on those. That's why we do it in all these places. You're gonna get plenty of practice. So uh, don't force it if it's like just tricky up there. Uh, it's hard enough when I have the room to do it when these frets are so small and it's kind of up here. So if you're hitting the body of your guitar because of the guitar you have, just just pass. Um, okay, here's F over here. We're gonna do triad, major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, half diminished, fully diminished, turn back around, half diminished, minor seven. It's a brain buster and that's what it should be. Triad, major seven, dominant seven, okay, half diminished. Again, it's very subtle sometimes, the, the change that's happening internally. Okay, after F, dun, 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 we're gonna do it off of B flat. I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, B flat over here. Um, I, it's gonna end up with some open strings, that's okay, let's try it. Okay, major, dominant seven next, minor seven, half diminished, fully diminished, has an open G, great, it's fine. Uh, half diminished, minor seven. The reverse around is harder to think of. So major seven, uh, sorry, triad, major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, half diminished, fully diminished, turn back around. Sometimes I replay that diminished, sometimes not. Um, I think I intend to replay it, I kind of like that, but sometimes I won't. E flat is next, triad, major seven, dominant seven, minor, Half diminished, fully diminished. Okay. Um, it's very hard for me to say it while I'm doing it uh, quickly enough. So I'm gonna do a few where I just kind of play through it like this. Okay, that's E flat. Now we're gonna get an E flat over here. Uh, this half diminished. I sometimes will bar it with that. Uh, Second finger, don't bar it with this finger. You're kind of crunching your position together. You can bar it there or all the tips of the fingers. Again, I'll tend to bar more if I'm up here 
and I'll use the tips of the fingers uh, more often if I'm down here. Okay, so I was on half diminished, and now uh, minor seven, dominant seven, major seven, triad. Great, what's a fourth up from E flat? Dun, 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 dun. Okay, I'm gonna start on A flat. Major, major seven, dominant seven. I'm more used to doing a hybrid picking. Do whatever you want though. Next is D flat. stretch here B E A little cramped up here that's okay It's great technique, work. Here's an E on the fifth string. Those fifth string ones are way more, <laughs> you can be a little swifter with them. Okay, down to seven. tricky to do that. We have to do this A up here. Can't use the open string or place because of the diminished seven chord of the fourth string. Two more, D and G. Here's D. off the fourth string is fun because you can actually do the whole thing with the starting with the open D chord this is very cool you got open D major seven dominant seven and then minor seven and then half diminished and then fully diminished pretty cool get to use those open strings back up half diminished minor seven dominant seven major seven back to the triad and G there's G, G major 7. G over here. G here. Definitely a uh, finger twister there on the fourth string. So that's all of them. Once we do it that much, you're really seeing those chord shapes. You're really seeing the relationships. You're really having to think, wait, what chord is next? And wait, what shape is that? What do I have to move? How is that different? Um, it's so good. I know it seems like a very dry kind of exercise and approach. Sometimes that's what it takes. Sometimes that is what can be the most beneficial for certain goals. Which leads me to say, as I sometimes do, that it totally depends on your goals, right? I will not tell you that this is something that everyone should do. I want you to do this if you feel like, 
oh, that's a cool approach to a thing that I feel like I really would like to brush up on, or I would like to understand better, I would like to work on that. So uh, for any of the reasons that it's beneficial, then I want you to dive in. And again, this, and I say again, because I say this in other videos with other exercises, this is a tool that gets a certain result, right? It's in your toolbox. It's like when you need that certain uh, screwdriver for the hinge on your door being loose, and you're finally like, all right, today's the day, I'm gonna get that out, and, and I know I have that, and I'm gonna tighten that up, right? So it's not like, okay, now you know this exercise, do it every day. There's too much to do. We can kind of come back to it every so often, uh, but you decide for yourself, in what way does this feel beneficial, right? I'm telling you that this is a, an efficient way for certain uh, skills that we can work on, and is very exercisey, and I do like that stuff because it really does work. Um, and I will be applying this stuff to more actual song examples and music in the future, but uh, this robust kind of hard workout stuff um, helps it quite, a, quite a bit. So we haven't talked about all the types of seventh chords yet, so if you want to look up a song and kind of use these in a musical context, maybe a tune, Georgia On My Mind, Autumn Leaves, something like that, a classic tune, um, you're going to come across some chord types that might be altered or have extensions, sharp five, flat five, sharp 11, flat nine, stuff like this. And uh, just with what we've learned so far, it's, it's not going to cover all of those options. However, there's a method that I've been teaching for a long time to take eight movable chord shapes. Only eight chord shapes is what we need to actually play any of those crazy chords uh, by reducing them down to just the essential element of the chord. It's a very cool method, and I put it together in a free PDF booklet uh, called Any Jazz Chord. You can use the link in the description or go to anyjazzchord.com to get that free booklet. And next week, I'm gonna give you my other favorite seventh chord exercise. We, we're gonna do kind of a, a similar thorough method and go through all the keys, but we're gonna play the chords that exist together, the seventh chords that exist together through the key. Also a fantastic exercise, so don't miss that. I'll be back with that next week, and I can't wait to see you there. I'm Jared from soundguitarlessons.com. See you next time. Thanks so much.